Hi, Stephanie. This is Tamala Odom, and I'm sharing with you my five-minute speech on organizational development. I want to start off by first giving the definition according to our printed text, and it says that organizational development is coherent, systematically planned, sustained effort at system self-study and improvement, focusing explicitly on change in formal and informal procedures, processes, norms, or structures using behavior science concepts. Now, to understand that long definition, I've broken that down in some of what our printed text calls the eight projects. And I want to identify with three of those eight projects, one of them being, as in the definition, systematically planned. When something is systematically planned, it's well thought out. There's usually an outline on how the change will be implemented and how it would impact others. The reason it is printed is so that everyone will understand the communication that is given in the organizational development. Number two, social system. This is how we communicate with each other. Communication can be done through written, oral communication. We as educators use mainly written and oral communication to get our message across to our students. And this is also used in the social system. Number three is self-study and self-reflection. We talked about this concept in our transformational learning course. And as an example, we can use the way we we self have self-reflection in our current classes as doctoral learners. We receive uh, feedback through our discussion board and feedback from our instructors and we're also able to provide feedback from our post in the discussion board and also at the end of the class surveys that we give on our instructors. This is important in organization development because feedback allows those involved to understand how can they improve to make the program better. Now, some of the norms, roles, and structures and procedures, I'll explain those. Norms are how well we adhere or how we resist to change because we know that all are not happy about change when it comes about. It's important that norms are established because they are the rules that are given to the group and they help us understand and guide us through whatever those changes may be in organizational development. With roles, they are involved, they show how the group is involved and how their portion of the change will interact, will impact, I should say, the overall job. So just to give an example, when we talk about roles in education, we have those who are principals, campus presidents, deans, department chairs, so on and so forth, and their role is to be the leaders. We also have instructors, professors, and teachers, and their roles are to implement those changes that are given to us by our leaders. And then with structures, according to our printed text, there are norms, that are roles, I should say, they're assigned to several people in interrelated jobs according to, again, the text. It gives us roles and responsibilities. It tells us who is in authority. It explains hierarchy. And this is done for the sake of evaluation and accountability. And then lastly, we have procedures. And procedures are really the roadmap that helps us understand how to get to our desired goal and to have to accomplish that. And procedures gives us the actions in which we take every day. So our lesson plan could be considered to be our procedures. Typical designs used uh, in carrying out organizational development, one would be organizational adaptability, and this is how we manage change and we see those results. This may take a lot of do-overs over time to ensure that we reach that goal. Number two is individual motive satisfaction. Everyone involved in organization development must benefit from it to be successful. So to use our example again in education, it has to be those who are our instructional leaders along with our instructors and faculty and staff must all feel that they are in a happy place in order for this to be successful. And then number three, effective work groups. We have to understand how to work with different personalities, different backgrounds to have the same motive to accomplish one goal. In order to do so, it goes back to communication, which is extremely important when we're talking about those designs. And then lastly, how do we establish organizational adaptability? Number one is to develop a memorandum of understanding. Most nonprofit organizations do this to make sure everyone is on the same page. And then diagnosing a current functioning. And this is used to accurately report data and to problem solve throughout 
self-evaluation. And then lastly, designing the organization project. This is done through training, surveys. This is done to solicit feedback from the group to help design the best plan to fit the group and to accomplish our goals. This has been my project, Stephanie. I hope that you found this to be helpful and that you understood what I was sharing with you. And I look forward to receiving your project and receiving your feedback on mine. Thank you.